Okay, more commercial hollow metal doors. I'm doing four in this building. And they called me and said, Pete, we don't know anyone who can do this. Well, we had a guy who tried and he failed. So I'm gonna show you how to do this right. And these do not always go in easy or perfectly. So in this particular room, we're putting what's called a wraparound frame. It's gonna go around each side. And so you have to make sure the proper frame is ordered. And there's the wraparound frame. And these are all knockdown frames, which means they come in three pieces. And you'll see there are, there are no holes in here to attach screws. First thing I do is just take the top jam piece and see if it fits. You've gotta have plenty of room side to side. Here, you see, I can move this thing all around. So that's plenty of room. And it also, wraps around because they don't have drywall, but here they do have the drywall. So let's just check it. And you see, they're gonna have to do double drywall here to make this fit. They could have ordered a different size uh, jam and that would have fit. And the distance from here to here is called the throat. So you wanna measure your exterior walls and order the correct throat size. I'm gonna put in strips of drywall here just to make this thing fit because if I don't, the jam can twist around. There's my hinge side, so it's gonna go like that. So just put one of the legs in place and just make sure it's gonna fit. Make sure it wraps around the wall, but also make sure there's enough height. And there's plenty of height here, so that's not an issue. This is a tensioning device. So when you turn this screw, it's gonna push this thing toward the wall. So once you get this thing into place, when you have the, the top part in place, then you hit these tensioning screws and that pushes tension against your stud here and that holds it in place. And then they have screw holes down on the bottom to put a screw into something, but as you can see, we don't have anything to attach to here, so we're gonna have to get creative with that. They have these straps, and this is for new construction. So these straps pull out, like so. And then, if this stud were to go all the way to the bottom, you would wrap this strap around the side of the stud and put a screw in there to hold it in place. It's not gonna work, because we have concrete down here. So I just take an angle grinder and cut these things off. So obviously we're gonna have to mount this thing in an unconventional way. It's not gonna be able to wrap because it's gonna hit this. So we may have to take out a portion of this concrete. So again, you gotta have good concrete tools and metal tools when you're doing this. I cut out that chunk of concrete, added another strip of drywall. They have drywallers coming in and that'll just pop into place and stay, which is great. Now, this is an exterior jam. All of this should be waterproof. This should be covered with, uh, with some sort of flashing paper, moist stop, something. They are aware of that. They just want me to put the doors in and they said they're gonna build a little alcove here so this will actually end up being covered. But if this wasn't, you would definitely want to waterproof all of this first, cover all this up with flashing tape because if water comes down in here, it'll get inside, it'll get into that drywall. I'm doing a dry fit first, so I just popped that one in. I put this leg in just to test the thickness. Now you see on the outside of this jam where the door is, is wider than this. So when you put your top jam in, it's gotta go that same way. So I'm gonna line it up like this. You just hold it on an angle and you see how it has to slide underneath those tabs on both sides. And once it's in there, then it snaps up into place. And then I can just throw it up there and make sure everything's gonna fit. So I have plenty of room to get my other jam leg in here. With all that in place, and remember, nothing's, nothing's been attached yet. We're just dry fitting. Now I take this jam leg and put it on an angle and I gotta reach it up in there and snap it into the top jam. Sometimes you have to tilt them like that in order to get them in there. And then you push everything up there 
And that's why you need enough room to do this. Get it in there. Then I kick this thing into place. Just to eye it up so with my tape right there. See, I need exactly 36 inches. So I have to make sure I can get 36 inches down here. And ideally you wanna be able to go wider than 36 on the bottom because you're gonna need room to move these around because we don't know if anything is plumb yet. But see, I do have the 36 inches. Not gonna worry about getting the strike side plumb. We'll worry about that later. Our hinge side is perfectly plumb and our top is perfectly square. So now we want to adjust these tensioning devices. So you back the screw off and that pushes the tensioner against the stud. And you just go easy until you feel it hit. Like I backed this off a couple turns already. Now I feel it hit there and then I back it off here and feel it hit here. You don't want to crank one side down. That'll push it out of square. So you just work these a little bit each way until they're both tight and that way you know your top is not gonna move. And you'll, you'll see it, you'll feel it. Cause see this, these jam pieces should squeeze against each other. If you have a gap here, this thing is too loose. So as you put the tension there, it squeezes this together and sometimes you'll, you'll see this nice tight thing there and you'll see this thing cannot move so now we'll double check our plumb so now i'm going to drill a hole on each side and also you have to visually check this thing and make sure the jam is not twisting one way or the other so with my hole drilled i use these uh three inch exterior grade uh, washer head lag screws these work great i will put in another one and i'll put one on the inside but that's all i want to do for now now I wanna hang the door and test it because if I have to take it apart, and sometimes that happens, I don't wanna put everything in place. And I pop one half off the top hinge and I screw it on here, but I leave both halves on the middle and lower hinge. Put my hinge in and drop the top pin in there. And then I swing around and I just put my hinges into place and I put two screws in each. Just two, because we're just testing. Let's see how the door operates. Look at that. Darn near perfect. Perfect gap on top. And we have a nice even gap here on the strike side, but see, it's a little bit large. And see how this has no gap? So we want to take the hinges off and back out those set screws a little bit, and that will tilt the hinge and that'll give us a bigger gap here and a smaller gap here. But what's important is that everything is flush. Nothing is out of angle. So this is gonna be great. So I'm not gonna pop off the door to do this. I'll just do it one hinge at a time. These screws are flush, so I'm gonna go one, two, three turns. One, two, three turns and I'll put this back on and we'll do the same thing for the other hinges. Now the hinge, instead of being flush with the door is tilted like that. And that's gonna push the door to the left. So now, you see that? Got a nice uniform gap here and a much smaller gap here. This gap, is a little close for me so we'll do it again and maybe we'll put in those screws one turn each oh we got all our screws back in everything is snug down this should do it oh, look at that perfectly uniform gap top to bottom on both sides and the top gap is perfect so now let's put in our screws and get this thing stabilized, then we put in our door hardware. So I've got both of my exterior construction screws, and I even put two on the interior. And as you do each one, you wanna open and close the door and keep checking it. Because if that jam twists, that can make your gap too big or too small. So check it each time. And now with all of that in place, 
This thing cannot be shaken. That thing is in there, sturdy, ready for the door hardware.